take on board what what's being said by by teachers' representatives about this. What it, what we know is that we've had changes in our society, and those are reflected in our schools, which are at the heart of our communities. We've seen a huge amount of stress over the course of the last twelve months. We know that things like uh, domestic abuse have, have have risen, and we also know that children and young people react to trauma in different ways. Some internalise it and present with depression or anxiety, but some externalise it and actually present with aggressive behaviour. And I think um, Geraldine's absolutely right to pinpoint the disruption this can cause, both to teachers, the person themselves, but also to their fellow pupils. So early intervention is key to try to nip this in the bud, try to sort out where the problem lies, and then use therapeutic interventions to try to prevent um, you know, suspensions and having to move children from one school to another. So has the education department seen an increase in behavioural issues since the end of lockdown? We've certainly seen an, a, a, an increase in additional educational needs, and a lot of those are about behaviour. So again, we've talked about depression, anxiety, the way that affects people's behaviour, the way it can sometimes make them aggressive or, or, or quite... Um, you know, disturbs during classes. And obviously then teachers feel um, that they have to deal with that, sometimes very quickly and without warning. What we are do, doing, uh, as I said, is trying to get that early intervention. We, we're already talking to the third sector, to the Department of Health and Social Care and to the constabulary about having a pan-governmental approach to this um, and really trying to, to help these young people before their behaviour escalates out of control, but also help their families as well in terms of increasing parenting skills to try to nip this in the bud and stop it becoming a long-term problem. Well, you mentioned there that work is already underway, working with different groups. What's the timeline for this? Well, what we're we're doing at the moment in the department is we've set up a policy hub. We're trying to catch up with a lot of these um, bit work streams that unfortunately were were postponed and put off last year so we can actually work with all the other agencies in government because this isn't just the problem for schools. This is a problem for society and we need to have that early intervention. We need to put extra resources into this to actually make our community and our society safer, better and far more productive. You mentioned um, the students moving from school to school. Given the time that some students have missed over the last year with all the lockdowns, how important is it to avoid things like exclusion and suspension? It's very important, both for those individual students, but as I've said, also for their classmates. If you're in a disruptive class, your your ability to learn is is impaired. On the Isle of Man, we don't have permanent suspensions. The suspensions are for a maximum of 10 days. Um, But what we do have is some, a very small number of pupils who find it very difficult to go back to their schools, particularly if if there's been violence involved and the stigma of of that. So what we need is to have far more early interventions, far more um, resources directed so we can and rehabilitate some of these children, children and young people so they can continue with their education and actually reach their potential rather than being um, left on the, on the scrap heap and the add-on effects that has for the rest of their lives.